Jack Swagger of Mars, Chapter 1, by Brandon Stroud. All American, 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 American Jack Swagger awoke from hypersleep to find the USS Ranthadness motionless, dark, and eerily silent. Silent. Hello? Jack bellowed, stepping out of his chamber with his arms held out to his sides, fingers spread wide, taking big stomps across the starship's cold metal floor. Is anybody out there? Swagger fumbled his thick taped fingers across the control board, looking for the vessel's auxiliary power switch. Perhaps he could burn light into this empty space. He'd open his eyes and find himself backstage at the Bell Center again, removed from this nightmare exile looking upward, and slightly to the right, as Vicky Guerrero, a boy long gone from his life, muttered explanations of a United States championship match under her breath and cackled. In his mind, Jack wiped his hands over his face and jogged in place. Tonight will be the night, he imagines himself saying. I'm going to defeat Santino Morella, or whoever, and win back the United States championship. A belt that belongs to the all-American, American, American. The voice in his head drifted away as his fingers laced their way through the control prongs of the ship's antiquated control mechanisms. With images of a cheering crowd and the Jack Swagger soaring eagle flashing through his brain, he pushed the stick forward, bringing up the damn mantis bridge lights. The fluorescent lights suddenly illuminated the room, popping with a loud fizz, blinding Jack as if he were opening his eyes on a bright new morning. Swagger moved his arm away from his eyes, and, as his sight adjusted, he found himself far, far away from the smart, sexy, and powerful world of WWE superstars. He was alone. Alone on the USS Radadmanthus, lost in God knows where. Light switch then lurched forward, sending Swagger stumbling forward into the ship's middle turnbuckle. Jack collapsed onto the ground, waiting for the hyper tube or whatever to tip over and pin him so he could end today's 30 seconds of work. He could his face. How long could this losing streak last? That's when he noticed something peculiar. The ship wasn't moving. After staring up at the lights for several minutes, Jack sprang to his feet. Frankenstein walked to the nearest shuttle window, expecting to find himself lost in a distant starfield. The engines have stopped. I'm dead, he thought. Maybe the hypersleep chamber malfunctioned. Am I out of gas? How long have I been out? Fear overcame him when he made it to a window. And after taking a moment to wipe the glass because his weird mouth breathing had fogged it up, Jack's eyes bugged out. The ship wasn't lost in space at all. It had landed. Jack shook his head and wiped his face with his hands. This was the most surprising thing to happen to him since losing to Evan Bourne five or six dozen times in a row. The Radantantimus had crashed in a great sea of pink sand. Marth, he whispered.